Each tube will now be pulled out one by one from the oscilloscope. They'll be checked to make sure the right tube is actually in the right socket. These sockets that are in the metal chassis and not in the board have a small annotation added. I put them there. Each tube will be tested, the pins will be cleaned, the sockets will be cleaned, and the tubes will be stored away until this project is done, making sure that none of the tubes are damaged unnecessarily. It will give, also give me more room to work on this unit. All of the tubes have now been removed from the unit. They've been very carefully cleaned and placed in this container. The 12 AU7s have been marked on the underside to tell me which slot they've been put in. I want to make sure I know which slot they were in when I place them back. They have they run at different duties and they're used for different things uh, because they're the same tube I like to know. They'll be put on the tube tester after the bottom pins are cleaned and we'll make sure the tubes are okay. At that point, they'll be boxed up and put out of the way. This unit is now uh, safe to work on without worrying about any fragile components at this point. You know, as long as I don't do anything stupid, nothing's going to break anymore. This 1V2 uses the uh, special scale. The first tube I've come across it uses a special scale, which is just like the other scale, except you could expect it to be extremely low, which is exactly what this is. When I hit the quality, falls all the way down here, but is still within acceptable limits. So the 1V2 is good, uh, this tube, according to the chart. So we're gonna call it good. And we're going to move on. This tube tester is, you know, it's a fast track tester, but it does tell me uh, gassy and shorty tubes, which is gassy and short tubes, which is important. So that tube's good. Uh, I've already checked these, uh, these three here. These are the uh, 12 AU7s. All three of those are good. And I'm going to move on until they're all done. We'll have to note that the 6AN8, as read on the special scale, uh, still shows to be weak. So this is probably a candidate for replacement. We'll look at the circuit that uh, this tube affects within the oscilloscope as well for observation and will most likely be replaced. All of the pins on the end of the tube sockets have been coated with deoxy with a Q-tip. All of the tube sockets have been coated with deoxy. Uh, some old tubes have been used to agitate the tube sockets. This completes the tube socket portion of this. The tubes will be put away and stored. Again, that other tube will be watched and looked at the diagram to see what circuit it affects. So here's an example of the uh, IM11 checking the potentiometers on this oscilloscope, in this case the external sink amplitude. And this one is a uh, 2 meg potentiometer that goes from a trace amount of resistance up to around 2 mega ohms. And I have it set on the scale for uh, 100k so we should see a deflection of around the 20 over here right and currently and it works inverse on this knob so maximum shows zero and as I turn the knob you will see that there is an increase and, and it's nice and smooth this potentiometer is good and I turn it up till we get to maximum deflection the maximum deflection right here shows around about you know just about 19 1.9 meg on this potentiometer. I turn the potentiometer back and it drops back down to zero. And with that, I'm able to determine that this, this pot is good. And I move through all the pots and make sure that they're all functioning just like that. Another good example would be this frequency vernier, which I have the uh, IM11 connected right here along the back of it. And the frequency vernier is a 7.5 meg potentiometer, which is right over here. And as I turn the knob, we can see that it should go up to around 75, which it does, showing us that this potentiometer is working correctly. And we could mark it off here on the diagram as good. Another one that's easy to forget is the one meg spot shape. That's a potentiometer under the unit. It just has a small uh, uh, turning point that sticks just out of the bottom of the chassis. This one meg appears to be untestable in circuit. It has a nice sweep uh, that goes from zero to 300K back to zero. It tells me the pot is good, but I think there's something in circuit that just doesn't 
allow it to get past the 300k you can see it goes to 300 then back down to zero again i have a feeling this is good and there's something in circuit that doesn't allow it past there something interesting also confirms it to be uh, original and correct part All right so that doesn't appear to be an, an alarming problem to me I've tested all the potentiometers with the IM11 and the only ones that troubled me any were the spot shape which I believe to be okay but can't be tested in circuit I may disconnect that one uh, test and confirm that it's okay and put it right back in no cause for great concern um, however vertical gain I flagged as bad this again will be treated just like spot shape it's gonna have to be removed from the circuit there is a possibility that the reason why this one is not working is because of the capacitors connected to it but to explain why I'm having a problem with this one right here I'll show you the sweep and this is like I said a 2k so it's gonna be a sweep on 2k and I'm showing you from 100k division and as I turn it this is what we're getting slow turn and all the way up to almost infinity and then it wiggles around and I'm still slowly turning this thing up so this is what we're seeing still slowly turning very slow turn this should be 0 to 2k this should have gone up from the 0 to the 2 on the top so yeah not a whole lot of faith in this one luckily uh, a 2k pot is not what you would call a hard to find electronics item you know if i have to go and 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 replace a 2k pot out of all of the components in this unit that require replacing then we're not really doing too bad i'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over this i could get it in one of my regular distributors i'm going to turn it back down i'm going to do it a bit quicker now so we're just going to bring it back down and we're bringing it back down and there you go there's zero so that's my 2k sweep right there you can see why why this potentiometer presents a problem if we weren't doing uh, uh, troubleshooting regimens like that, that vertical game would have been an absolute nightmare uh, in, in, in looking at the scope and trying to figure out why it didn't work, you know. So there we go, flagged another thing. Uh, everything else, however, is, is annotated as green. Uh, that concludes the uh, troubleshooting for the pot. So that portion is done. I've also started some capacitor work. Here's the high voltage capacitors right here. I soldered the bottom and moved to the post so the capacitors wouldn't be all the way up against the uh, um, the chassis. I'll also put something down there, something rubber that I could stick against here to offset those capacitors from the frame. I noticed, however, that in working with heat over here, this um, 470 finally um, went out of specification. So I've added this to my uh, second order list. That'll include a couple of other parts that are going to go in as I do some work here. Other than that, this came out really nice, and I'm happy with it. I've also replaced the uh, three electrolytics on the top side. And they are the, um, the small one in the back and the uh, uh, one up front here, as well as the uh, one on the other side. And I've removed this electrolytic, um, the multi-hand capacitor. From the unit here and here it is as it sits i'm simply going to remove the uh the terminals and put it right back in and then i'll uh, do my project here to get some of these electrolytics put right back in where it was uh, this is going to be treated separately from this one uh one of the folks on youtube was kind enough to point out to me that i was reading the schematic wrong with regard to some voltage drops and i do appreciate that uh, did not however answer the question about this 100 ohm resistor down here uh, that's coming off the uh, the uh, rectifier which can't be seen because of this capacitor in the way the question has not been answered yet there's still time however I'm just just something I'm keeping in mind I'm gonna order that resistor in the next order just in case I did look at some other uh, oscilloscopes of that model and did not see the resistor coming off of this uh, off of this tube on pin 7. I come back to the schematic here. Now looking at it a, a bit more correctly, having a, a better understanding with a little less confusion. And there is still that resistor, 100 ohm to watt, 
right? We're disregarding this 450 here uh, off of pin seven. Nothing else touches anything on pin seven till it goes through that 100 ohm. It is not present on this unit or any other unit that I've seen in any videos. So uh, the question still stands. Haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm, I'm going to order it just in case I'm wrong. Here's what the capacitor looks like after the uh, internals have been clipped out, leaving nothing but the grounds. It is now just simply a showpiece on the top. On the bottom, it is a glorified ground bridge for a circuit board. That's all it is now. The first of the 20 microfarad capacitors is wired across. You can see the negative is tied to negative. The positive comes across and meets the old positive or the uh, terminal where the positive used to be. See, I ran the terminal across and soldered on both sides for extra rigidity. I'm going to do the same thing for the second and third. There is an old wire here that used to meet across. I've got it uh, pushed away right now. You can see it right, right over here. Uh, I'm going to find a place for it if it's appropriate to put it here or meet it at another point on the uh, on this uh, board. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I don't have to decide till the second one is finished, so I'm not going to concern myself just yet. But I got a second one and a third one to put in, and then this uh, uh, um, group of electrolytic capacitors will be done. Admittedly, uh, the other one, even though it's bigger, will actually be easier because it's not going to be done on the circuit board. These are these are miles miles and miles easier to do than something like this but this is coming out really nice and it's coming out clean so i'm very happy with it all three connections are now in place this includes that extra connection i spoke about earlier that came off this resistor and wrapped around the f triangle connection you can see it coming down here into this 20 microfarad capacitor every connection was tested against ground so i came off the shielding to each one of these respectively and, and I came out to like a faraway trace of uh, coming from each one of them to make sure they were good on re 20 microfarads including the connection to there um, I could probably come in with some clear heat shrink or something to increase the rigidity of these I'm gonna do something I'm not gonna leave it like this uh, they are the same size they're in close proximity if they were pulled together real tight they'd be nice and rigid uh, electrically this is done this is solved uh, this is finished. It just needs to be uh, done in, in such a way it's real nice. They're all the same height. You know, it looks good. Uh, aesthetically, it's very nice. It just needs to be finished off, you know, put to bed. And then we can move on to the to the next one, get that done. Uh, as soon as I figure out this, this 100 ohm uh, mystery that's going on here, uh, get this monster out of here. And like I said, uh, replace this one that went bad as of late. I uh, want to zoom in on this while I'm here because this is very interesting. I saw this in here, and if you look, there is a, a, a metal uh, element here with a with a disconnect. Like, a, like if it heats up too much, it, it closes something, it does something. It's like a thermistor of some kind. Just wanted to point that out. That sits in line uh, with VAC. So the part number right there for those interested. It's a surgister. Sergister. Um, so that's where we are. Found a couple parts that need replacing. Uh, started to get the electrolytics going. Got a whole lot of non-electrolytics to do, but we still have, as far as the electrolytics go, we see uh, the four remaining ones in support of this right here. I got a standoff, a five-point standoff in support of this that, I, that I'm going to put in. We're not doing it like this one. We don't need to. We're going to have a nice standoff coming off here to ground. And then we're going to have, obviously, this type. We've got some, some axials, not radials, that we're going to use. It's going to be a lot easier to do that job.